Cuba, it's me, just in time for the Toronto Blue Jays versus Detroit, Detroit Tigers tonight, and you can tell I'm excited. It feels like it's been forever since baseball. I know it's only been a couple days, but the other game was an afternoon game, then no baseball yesterday, and I really didn't know a lot going into this one and what was going to happen, so after every inning, I'm just going to say what happened and what didn't happen and my quick thoughts on it. This is your game highlights of the Blue Jays versus the Tigers from Elian's perspective. Okay, so the first inning just happened. It looks like it's Alexander pitching against Robbie Ray. Uh, Alexander had a quick uh, three up, three down inning. Uh, Robbie Ray did give up one hit, a couple strikeouts. Pretty uneventful inning. We're going to start with the second right now. Okay, so after the second... Uh, uh, Robbie Ray is just doing what he always does. He's just kind of cruising along there. Another good inning for him. The Blue Jays had a bit of a eventful inning. They got a walk out of Alexander after he struck out like three in a row. So it looks like they were kind of going back and forth, the pitchers there. Um, but then he gave up a walk to Gurriel. Then he hit Alejandro Kirk. And then we also found out uh, next inning, we're going to get a Blue Jay making his debut or a starting debut. He did pinch hit the other game. And uh, so that's it for the second. We're moving along to the third. It's a quick game so far. All right, so things are picking up a little bit here after the third inning. Well, the third inning picked up a little bit. We have, The thing with Robbie Ray is he pitches so good that his pitch count goes up because he gets a lot of strikeouts. He's got like five already because they, he doesn't get a lot of contact because his pitches are so good they can't put the bat on the ball on him. So most of his strikes are not foul balls. They're actual swinging or looking strikes. So he's pitching real well. Uh, he's only had one base runner so far, uh, so good inning for him. And the hit was because uh, Espinal at third, he's usually he's been really great at third this year, um, but it was really hit hard to him. But um, I feel like... Every other time he makes those plays, maybe not this time. And then uh, Kevin Smith gets his first major league hit. His family's there. Everybody's happy. And the uh, Blue Jays once again stranded two more base runners and couldn't capitalize. And we'll see after the uh, fourth inning. Okay, it's been a slow start, but uh, uh, Robbie Ray still pitching away there. No hits. or oh, he gave up the one hit. No hits this inning is what I'm trying to say. And the pitch count's around 50. Not too bad. Cruising along, I feel like he's the kind of guy that they can let go to 120 pitches because, in my opinion, he's been the best pitcher this year. So after four, he's doing real well, and uh, they're not picking up on his stuff, and he's changing it up. Uh, it's a shame he didn't make the All-Star game. I feel he should be... I know the Blue Jays aren't that team, but he should be in the Cy Young. Because look at his ERA, and look at like just look at everything. He should be in the Cy Young conversation. And so, uh, took care of them, no problem, in the top of the fourth, the Tigers. And then... I, fr I didn't even really comment on this. I, it's kind of weird seeing Bo Bichette hitting leadoff, but I guess they don't want they want to keep Simeon where he is. He's hot, and Bo's been kind of up and down. And so he's hitting leadoff tonight, which is kind of strange. And then uh, Vladdy finally does it. Everybody's been all over Vladdy. He hasn't been producing, blah, blah, blah. Um, he sure put... Uh, he gets one home run, and now it's like, oh, now he's back to his old self or whatever, even though, like, he probably missed a home run by, like, two feet one of the other games. But anyway, puts the Blue Jays on the board, and then Alejandro Kirk, who was amazing at the beginning of the season, and then after his injury, it took him a while to get going. The last couple games he's been on fire, but he's had a perfect game tonight. Uh, not only did he get hit by a pitch in his first at-bat, he hit one, drilled it off the bat, and the left fielder couldn't make the catch, so he got ended up getting a double but they stranded another uh, base run. I feel like they stranded like five. But here after the fourth, one nothing Blue Jays. We'll see you after the next inning. Okay, so that was a quick inning. Uh, both pitchers, Alexander and uh, Robbie Ray, they're just kind of matching each other. Bo they're both in about the high 60 in the pitch count and 70. So the next inning will be really critical. If no one can get to them, they might both be able to get to the eighth or the ninth, which is... It seems more rare nowadays. Like back in the days, they used to go over 100 pitches, but it, this is the true definition of a pitcher's duel. I know the Blue Jays are up one nothing, but the hits are like... The Blue Jays have a couple more hits, but Robbie Ray's pitch count is a little bit higher as he throws more pitches. But this is this game is kind of cruising along, and, um, you know, it's uh, pretty fun to watch the pitcher's duels, but also sometimes it's good to see some offense. But uh, I'm liking where they're standing. As long as they're winning, that's all I care about. 
All right, we are all done with the sixth inning. Um, Robbie Ray now has 10 strikeouts, and I'm just going to praise him all day. I'm trying to get, like, the Robbie Ray facial hair look here, but I've got a little bit of gray, so it's not the same. But I'm trying to go with Robbie Ray for Halloween. 83 pitches after six inning, 10 strikeouts, like two or three base runners maybe. He's, and he's got Cabrera, who's going for his 500th home run. He's at 499. And Cabrera a, even has some supporters there with signs hoping for the 500th home run, but he's now 0 for 3 against them. And uh, Alejandro Kirk, it looked like he picked off, uh, they got a base runner on, and it looked like he caught him stealing. Um, man, I just want to comment on how good McGuire and Kirk, Kirk have been defensively. Both have had pretty decent bats, but McGuire has made some great defensive plays and caught a couple runners stealing, but then they overturned the call, so he... Ended up getting to second in scoring position, but Robbie Ray once again got out of it. And then the Blue Jays were kind of a quick up, three up, three down inning. Although Gurriel almost had a hit, but the shortstop made a tremendous play. So let's go to the seventh. Well, this game is just kind of cruising along. Not a lot of base runners, not a lot of like... Uh, ten pitch at or ten pitches in that at bat where some guys fouling away like eight in a row or whatever. Robbie Ray got through the seventh just fine. So did Alexander, and apparently I thought they were giving fist bumps to Robbie Ray because he was done. But I just heard the announcer say they are going to send him back out for the eighth, which I'm just so happy with. I really hope they do that and then maybe bring in the closer. I'd like to see a complete game. We don't see a lot of that anymore. But both pitchers just. Wow, it's a quick game. Sometimes after two hours, it's only in like the fourth inning still. But no, we're going into the eighth after like it started around seven. It's 9 p.m. Eastern right now. So I'll catch you after the eighth. Okay, well, I feel a lot more happened in that inning than pretty much the rest of the game other than the one home run. So Robbie Ray, they did put him out there for the eighth. And I was happy to see that. And uh, so he gets a base runner on. That's his fifth hit given up at this point. Uh, in the top of the eighth, uh, the Tigers are out hitting the Blue Jays. So then this guy steals third, and there's one out. And the guy hits what looks like a sacrifice fly to Teoscar Hernandez in right field. But he's just pounces on this ball, and it comes up throwing, so they can't score. And I'm like, Ray's going to get out of this. So now there's two out, guy on third, and he throws a ball in the dirt. Not sure if it's a wild pitch or a pass ball, but it gets past Kirk. And they tie the game up. And I'm like, no. But then he gets the next batter after. And, of course, Buck Martinez goes into his red. He always rants about the catchers on one knee, how they go down on one knee and they can't block the ball. Well, there must be a reason why they're doing it. With all the analytics, it's the same with the shift. There must be a reason why the managers let them do it or so they would say, don't do that. But uh, I'm not going to argue with Buck. He probably has a valid point as well. So then they tie it up. I'm like, no. So Robbie Ray finishes it up. He gets through eight innings, gives up no walks. Five hits, one earned run, over 10 strikeouts. Um, fantastic. And I'm like, let's pick him up. Let's get him back in the win. So the bottom of the eighth, we go to 1-1. One, one, and they bring in a, a relief pitcher, the Tigers, a Cisnaro, or I don't know if I'm saying that right. And Espinal gets a leadoff hit. And I'm like, okay, here we go, here we go. And then uh, Bo Bichette walks. So nobody, uh, or wait, is that how it goes? No. So there was one out. And... Uh, no, sorry, there was zero out with first and second. Sorry. This is my first time. This is my first time. So first and second, Aspinall and Bichette. Simeon strikes out. Vladdy Carrero comes up, and I'm like, oh, man, just like anything here, right? And um, this is something I've noticed, I guess, because the games are a little bit more meaningful now. The last couple weeks, the Blue Jays hitters have been more frustrated with the umps before or themselves, but like I remember Springer did it a couple times, and they didn't used to do that. They were always kind of way more humble, and Vladdy was getting frustrated, and then he hit into a double play. So we're going to the ninth. Um, not sure if I, I'm pretty sure Ray's done, but we're going to the ninth, one-one game. See you after the ninth. Will it be the end of the game? Or are we going to go to extra innings? Well, it looks like we're going to extra innings. So Romano came in. Uh, like their normal closer, and he came in and he did really good. Uh, Gurriel kind of screwed up a catch there, but then nothing happened from it. So then the Tigers in the bottom of the ninth, Blue Jays looking to walk it off. They bring in their closer, um, Soto, and he's throwing over 100 miles per hour with ease, but he walks Tay Oscar Hernandez, and then he walks Gurriel. Nobody out, first and second. So the Blue Jays pinch hit. Uh, for uh, Kirk, for the catcher, they bring in Valera in to bunt. 
And now I love the bunt, but I feel like it's a lost art and people are not good at bunting anymore, but they feel this guy is going to do it. But the first pitch, 98 miles per hour, lower bottom strike zone. He pulls the bat back. And then the next one, he pops up. So, you know, if you, um, if you get a foul ball and a bunt on the third strike, then it's an out. But they give him the sign to bunt again, 0-2. But the first baseman and the third baseman are in really close. So he's going to try and bunt it to third baseman. Ends up getting bunted to the first baseman who pounces on it and throws it to third. Gets the lead runner. And then Gritchick came up. Hits into another double play. Inning ending double play for the Blue Jays. And we're going to the 10th. And uh, I think it's uh, Richards coming into pitch. So And the runners start on second and extra innings. So my first night of doing this and it's going longer than I thought. We'll see you after the 10th. Well, that'll do it. Uh, the game is over after 10 innings. 4-1 uh, to one Detroit Tigers. Basically, Richards did come in, and it's really hard. I don't know if I like this rule. I got it why they did it last season, everything, of starting the runner on second. And, it, I mean, it is fair for both teams. But um, So Richards comes in with the runner on second, top of the 10th, Detroit Tigers, strikes out the first two batters. And then uh, they pinch hit, and the guy just slices it over the head of Espinal at third, and it goes to Gurriel, and he's right on the ball, and he's thrown out quite a few guys this year. So I'm like, yes, and he looked like he had it, and then he threw it like way, not even close. Like it was like halfway up the first baseline. So they score. So Montoya goes to the right-hander, Simber. He gives up a single. Then he, then he gives up the next batter, gives a single. It's 4-1. to one. And um, obviously I'm not blaming the fans, so don't take this the wrong way. But if I was at a Blue Jays game, I feel like they, they're always, like, so anxious and nervous and, like, being, like, oh, like, clenching, biting their nails or whatever. But, like, remember when they were in the playoffs back in 92, 93 or, like, recently, four or five years ago? Like, the play, every potential at bat, it was like, let's go, Jays! I feel like if they were doing that... Um, that might help a bit, but also the Blue Jays just didn't come up, didn't, you know, they couldn't capitalize. They had a lot of runners on base, good play game by both teams, um, but a disappointing result as I am a, a Blue Jays fan. That's why I'm doing it. This is my first time doing it. Uh, please have some pity on me, but let me know what you liked and what you didn't like. I'm going to try and do more of these if it goes over well and, and uh, see how it is, but I'm going to do a three star segment. So my first star is Alexander, the starting pitcher for the Tigers. Second star is Robbie Ray, the starting pitcher for the Blue Jays. And my third star is uh, Scope. Scope, I don't know if I'm saying it right. He made that critical play on the bunt going to third instead of getting the out at first, but getting the lead runner at third. And then he also got an RBI single in the 10th. That'll do it. Thanks for joining me for Elian's perspective of the Toronto Blue Jays Detroit Tigers uh, baseball game on August 20th.